Hey, welcome back, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, parents, teachers. My name is Jesse, and I want to thank you for joining me today on my art videos, tutorials channel, or something like that. I know it's kind of a tongue twister. Um, today, we're going to be painting this really cool little rocket ship that's going to be taking everybody out into space. Check it out. It's all nice and shiny. And that's because there is glitter on the piece. So for those of you at home that have glitter paints, we are going to be using some on this piece later in the session. If you don't have any, don't worry about it. It's not absolutely necessary. That's just an option that we're going to be using. I'm going to be drawing this first. The first part of the session will be drawing the piece out and then the second part will be painting it. I'm using an eight by 10 inch canvas pretty much any material that you have at home that you can draw and paint onto will work. I'm also using acrylic paint. <clears throat> acrylic paint is a pretty quick drawing paint, uh, but tempera, um, finger paints, maybe watercolors, markers, and even colored pencils will work. For those of you that are painting, again, I'm going to be using acrylic paint for my piece. It can get a little messy, so I'm going to be changing in just a minute and have, putting an apron on. Uh, but before that, I just want to remind everyone to please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and also hit the little bell picture that you see at the bottom. When you hit that bell, <clears throat> anytime I upload a new video, you will get an alert on your phone or your email to let you know that there's a new video for you to come over and watch. Also, I take requests. If you have a particular favorite character that you'd like to see a video tutorial on, in other words, you'd like to learn how to draw it or paint it, please let me know in the comment section below. Maybe at school you're studying about dinosaurs or lions, tigers, etc., and you want to see a tutorial on that as well, let me know, and maybe we'll do one in the future. All right, boys and girls, give me a minute. I will be right back. I will get everything set up. I'll change my clothes, and we're going to get to drawing and painting. All right, see you in just a minute. Okay, boys and girls, I'm back, and in a second, we're going to get to drawing this. I've got my setup over here so that I've got my reference rocket ship painting right here. We're going to be drawing it onto this canvas. I've got some clothes on that I don't mind getting paint on. It's an old Spider-Man shirt. Why Spider-Man? Because Spider-Man is very cool, which by the way, we're probably going to be doing a video tutorial on how to paint Spider-Man sometime in the future. I've got my uh, painter's apron on so I can help clean, keep my clothes clean. And I've got my painter's hat. Why? Because I don't like to feel like an artist, but also I don't have to worry about brushing my hair. So there's that. Anyway, boys and girls, I'm going to come over to the other side of the table in just a second and we're going to get moving. Basic pencil, nothing fancy. This one here is an artist pencil, but it doesn't do anything fancy for this uh, drawing today. So whatever you have will be perfectly fine. Okay, I'm gonna come over and we're gonna get moving here. Okay, everyone, I am back and we are ready. I've switched to a basic number two pencil, no specific reason, I just, uh, in the process of getting prepped over here, I misplaced my other pencil, so I forgot what I needed. Like I said before, though, all you need is a basic pencil. All we're going to talk about right now is the drawing process. We're going to draw the whole piece first, and then later on we'll talk about the painting. I've got my little handy Boba Fett cup with some green tea in it so that I can drink throughout. Mm -hmm. Okay, it always helps to keep my throat um, wet, right? I mean speaking quite a bit. So this was a gift from my brother Alex from some Christmases ago. Pretty cool, huh? Check out Boba Fett. He's cool. All right, everybody. Let's get going here. We're going to start with our Mr. Rocket Ship here. And check it out. Boys and girls, parents, teachers, and everybody else. This is how, I'll, anytime I'm going to draw anything, this is how I look at it. Let's say this is the first time I'm looking at this rocket ship. I've never seen this before, and I say, hey, I want to draw that. I always try to break things down as simply as I can. If I try to take it all in at one time, it can be a little bit overwhelming, especially for those of you here that are new to drawing, that have never drawn before, or have very little experience with drawing. 
it can be overwhelming. You look at it and you're going, oh man, there's lots going on here. Here's what, here's what I like to do. I like to break things down into the basic shapes. Obviously, these are circles, right? So those are going to be pretty easy. These are stars, pretty basic. I know some people sometimes have trouble with, um, with that, but you'll see in a moment that they're not that crazy. But let's talk about the rocket ship for now. First thing that I do is I will come in here and look at the overall shape, which is essentially a giant triangle, almost, right? If you were to only look at the rocket ship itself, you have a long, kind of curvy, sided triangle, right? Let's look at that again, right? You got the point, you got two, two sides coming down, and then you got the base, the bottom. So that's what we're going to start with. So here's the front of my rocket, which is here. And then I'm going to come back here, and about right here is where the back part of my rocket's going to be. So I'll draw that in first, just really light. And in a second, mm -hmm. I know it's going to be, this is going to be difficult for you guys to see, because I'm going light. I like to work lightly with my pencil marks at first. And then later, I'll come in and darken these up. I recommend keeping your pencil marks light at home as well. Okay, it's very difficult to erase dark lines, or it's much more difficult than to erase light lines. I keep my lines light at first so that I can erase, make corrections if I need to. So here we are. Here's my line across here. I don't know if you can see it, but in a second, I'm going to darken it. Okay? Actually, let me darken it now. I've got a marker. I'm going to come in and go ahead and darken it a bit. Okay? So here's my line right now. All right? There's my, my line. Now I'm going to draw this side of my rocket ship. So here I go. Nice and light. Again, it's kind of curved. And then it comes in like that. So here's what I did. I went like this. Follow the path that comes across like that. Okay, I'm not going to darken that just yet. I'm, gonna, I'm going to do my other side first, and then I'll come in and darken. I'll, I may even make some corrections. I'll do the corrections and then darken my lines. So here I go. Here's my other side. Okay. <clears throat> Again, guys, anytime you guys need to rewind, rewind, I'm using old video tape turns, uh, terms. Anytime you guys want to back up, please back up, pause, etc. Okay, so I've got my two sides now. I'll look at them. Again, I'm working very lightly. I know you can't see it just yet. I'll darken them in a second. I'm coming in here and making little corrections before I darken my line. Normally, if I'm doing this for myself, I'm not doing this for a video, I don't need to darken anything up because I can see the stuff right in front of me. I'm only darkening these up with a marker so that you at home can see what I'm doing. So here I go. Okay, I'm going to dark. I'm going to make the right on top dark first. Whoop. Let me just straighten that. <clears throat> so there's my line at the top, and here comes my other line. All right, that. So we still have this ring in the center. This is also a triangle. Look at this. It's a triangle like this. It starts at the same spot here as these ones, as these do, right? So if you do a line across, this starts right at the same point that those do. So let's do a little imaginary. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. This is with my imagination. I'm kind of envisioning a line that goes across here. So I find a little spot. And then I'm going to make, this is actually a very tiny, narrow triangle. Same length as the other two triangles. Okay, but again, it's on the top side. We're looking at it from the top. All right, so here, let me darken it up. One side, other side, other side. Take a look. Triangle, triangle. Triangle, triangle. <clears throat> okay, I'm breaking this down into shapes. Okay, cool. So we have the main shape of my rocket, of our rocket ship in place. What I'm going to do next is do that little porthole, the port, the window, the little window right here. What is it? It's a circle. So right about there. I know some people have a hard time drawing circles. Take your time with it. If you need to erase, like I said, use your eraser. You use a paper towel with a little tiny bit of water on it, really, really lightly damp, and come in and erase, okay? All right. Uh, I will demonstrate the, the erasing process in a bit. So, but here we have two circles, right? Because we have a circle on the outside and a circle on the inside. The inside is our window. The outside is just kind of like the, 
but the actual metal part around the outside, the casing, the aluminum, or whatever you want to call it. But this is our window, and this is the outside of that window. So I'm going to draw another circle on the inside to represent our, our actual window. All right, there we go. What's our next step? I want to draw these little segments. We have a little cone, a little needle at the top of the nose. It's also a triangle with a little curve on it. All I'm going to do for this part here, get to this, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go with a slightly curved uh, base. A triangle with a slightly curved base. Okay, so there's that. I'll lighten both the window and that in just a sec. I'm going to go ahead and do that. This line now. So I did this one, now I'm doing that one. Here we go. Curved. All right. Cool. Now let me darken all that up so you can all see it. All right. Window. First, we did the outside first, so let me darken that up first. Okay. There's the window. Sorry, that's the outside of the window. Here's the actual window itself, the inside part. Then we got this, the curved base of this part, the bow rocket ship, and then this part of our rocket ship. All right? We're going to go back here. Okay, we're, we're going to start here. I am going to make an adjustment, like I said, because I want this to, I do want this to be a little bit more curved, kind of like this one is. So because I didn't already make it curved inward, this is kind of an, a wider base. And that will work too if I wanted it to. But just to show you what I would do, since I've already um, marked it all in with my pen, with my marker, I'm just going to come in and do this. Slightly curve this in a little bit. So it gives us kind of the same feel. And I'm going light again. <clears throat> this back part is slightly curved. So that I'm going to go ahead and draw that in in a second. So let me curve that in. There we go. Let me darken that. All right, how's that? <clears throat> Hope you can all see it. Okay, next what I'm going to do, so this segment here is this segment right here. Okay, this is this. And what is that? It's almost a rectangle. It's almost a rectangle, right? You got the, the uh, edges kind of curve in a little bit, but it's almost a rectangle. If you envision all of this <clears throat> as, as uh, um, Blocks, squares, uh, geometric shapes, rectangle, triangle, giant triangle, circle, right? It makes, it helps, it helps break things down a little bit. So here we go. I'm going to make this segment now. What is this? Almost a long rectangle, but it's got slightly curved edges. So I'm going to draw, just draw that part in. I'm going to make this one very slightly curved. Okay. And actually, I'm going to adjust this one too. I'm going to curve it a little tiny bit too. Just a little bit. Drawing is never perfect. It is a process of making corrections as you go. Lots of times people get really frustrated because their drawing does them, doesn't come out perfect the first time. I've been drawing since I was a child, and that's one of the first things I had to learn. You can make corrections. If you make a mistake, no problem. You can fix it. Make a little correction. But again, that's why you do really light lines. You work with light lines. So you can fix them, and then later you can come in and darken them up, okay? If you wanted to darken them up, you don't have to. So here's what I just did, this line right here. And again, it's got a little curve. I'm going to correct this one a little bit to give it a bit of a curve, okay? Cool. So what do we got? We got this. We got this. We got our whole shape. We got our wings, okay? We got our window, and we got this little segment right there. What's next? Let's give our rocket ship some fire. So here's how I do this. I'm going to start on the outside. I'm going to start like this. And don't stress too much about this. Everyone's flame is going to be a little bit different, right? So here's how I do it. Again, I'm going to go light. I'm going to darken it up so you can, all, you can all see it. So all I'm doing is creating these little, they're almost like waves, like ocean waves. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Go and I'm just doing the outside for now, all right? Just the outside. I'm gonna right now just retrace this in a little bit. Okay. So here I go. 
outside of Now, next thing we're going we're going to do these inside segments, this inside orange, outer orange line. Okay, so here I go. I'm just almost following what's on the outside. Okay, almost identical to what's what's on the outside. In other words, this follows this, but of course it's on the inside. And I'll do that one more time for that for this one on the inside, the dark red fire on the inside. And it loosely kind of follows that as well. All right, so let me darken those up. There we go. That's what it looks like, okay? What's left? Well, we got some, got some planets. A circle. I work lightly, so if I need to make corrections, I can. I know sometimes circles are difficult to do. Okay, I'm gonna make another one over here. You can make as many planets as you'd like, right? If you wanna have more planets, more stars, all up to you. And the second one coming, actually, let's do it now. So here I go. I like the shape of my circles, right? If I didn't, I would correct them. I would simply keep doing this. Let's say I have a planet that I don't like, who's, who's outside I don't like, I'm not going to erase that. I'm just going to keep doing this until I get it right. All right? I'm going to be covering up, covering it up with paint anyway. If I was just leaving it as a drawing, then I would go in and erase and, you know, if I wanted really nice clean lines. And I promise I'm going to show everyone how to erase in a moment, so stand, stay tuned for that. For now, though, erasing my planet at the top. Okay. Now I'm going to trace this one. We're gonna, and then we're going to do some of these close-up stars in a second. So these close-up stars, you can do them like you do the traditional stars. You know, sometimes you guys do these lines like this. You guys do those, right? Let me darken, up, darken it up so you can see what I did. So I did one of these. I did one of these like this. Right? Like that. Like that. And like that, right? I can do those. We'll do a bunch of those later on when I color them and you won't see that as much. Now, I'm working with markers, so when I put my paint on them, you're probably going to be able to see some of, some, some of that marker coming through. But you guys are only doing those this in pencil, so you don't have to worry about it as much. So now I'm going to, I'm going to do this one. There you go. Cool little star here. Now I'm going to go over here. And they don't have to be all facing the same direction. Right? They can be different angles. Like this one's slightly pointed that one. That one's a little further straight up. That one might be a little bit over that way. They're your stars. It's your painting. Please make it your own. I want you guys to get creative with this. Again, if you want more stars, do more stars. If you want less stars, do less stars. All right, there we go. There's that star there. And then I'm going to come over here and do this one also. Right, there we go. There we go. And there we go. And then what about all those little tiny white ones that you see up there? I'm not going to mess with those right now. I'm only going to do those with paint. Okay, there is our basic drawing, rocket ship drawing. I can see that there are some differences between the two. Again, I'm not worried about it. Um, I like the way it looks. And in a moment, I'll come in and um, paint it up. All right, everybody, I am back <clears throat> and I've got our setup ready to do some painting right here to paint up our little rocket ship. Colors that I'm going to be using, white, yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, and green. If you don't have all, the, if you don't have all of these colors, make do with what you've got, okay? And I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to use colored pencils or crayons, whatever, to color in um, your rocket ship, that's up to you. Okay, if you only have some of these colors, you can mix them up to uh, to create colors that you don't have. For example, purple and red, sorry, blue and red will make purple. Yellow and red will make orange, all right? So if you add white to any of these colors, it'll lighten them up really nicely. So anyhow, 
but you don't have to worry about making it making your rocket ship the exact colors that I'm going to be using. Okay, like I said, make do with what you have. All right, boys and girls, here we go. Brushes. Sorry, really quickly. Let's talk about our brushes. I've got four brushes in here. I've got one uh, one inch brush. This is about a one inch brush right there. Uh, sorry, this is about a one and a half inch brush. But eh, and it's a flat bristle brush. Okay, it's synthetic bristles. Um, anything you have similar to this is okay. The sizes don't have to be exact. This right here is our one inch synthetic bristle brush. Same thing. Don't worry about it as long as you're kind of close. This is a quarter inch. These are called, all of these are called flat brushes, by the way. By the way, basically what that means is that the end here is flat. Okay. Again, synthetic bristle, soft. Um, and then I've got this really skinny liner brush that I'm going to be using to, to make some of the little uh, detailed stuff okay uh, we're going to start with this one here with our biggest brush again this is about a one and a half inch brush um, so anything remotely close to this is okay and I've got our plate here um, whoop I did not get a second plate I need a second plate here so give me just a second okay so our second plate is where I'm going to be mixing colors okay so I've got that ready I've got some paper towels ready in case I need to clean any accidents up. And then of course I've got water in my water cup. Okay, so I'm going to mix some, mix some blue for that background color. Now a couple of things. This step, which I'm about to do right now, which basically is coloring in the background color, excuse me, the background color can be done before we do any drawing. The reason why I didn't do it at the beginning is because it is a darker color and if I did that first, you would not be able to see my pencil marks most definitely, but this would be a little difficult even if I did, marked everything in, put it, uh, you know, outlined everything in the marker, it, would, it might still be difficult to do. So I was trying to avoid that. That being said, I'm going to do a light mixture. I want to create a light blue. So I'm going to take some of my blue off of my mix, my plate here. Okay. I'm going to bring it over to my plate over here. I find a little spot. On my plate I'm going to bring quite a bit of the white over and I'm going to mix the two together it's going to be a light blue color I'm going to take some water and dip it in dip my I'm going to take some water from my water cup I'm going to mix the two together and watch what I'm going to do okay sorry I'm going to create a color that's about right here all right I want to add water to my mix again and the reason why I do that is it that water makes the paint easier to work with but I want to make sure that that water blends in really well to the paint okay um, then I'm going to do this a couple of times I want my colors to be a little bit on the swirly side again normally I would do this step first it's not super important but it is um, you know it is something that you may want to do in the future to your background first if you're not following along with me or you know once you've kind of got the hang of it or if you decide to do this painting again on your own do the background first and then draw it in here's why I don't do this just yet okay here's why and I'm going to explain this first I'm going to do this I'm going to do uh, streaks with my brush diagonal brush strokes like this following the path of my rocket ship by doing this with the brush strokes it makes it look like the rocket ship is actually flying through space in that direction it helps give it that effect if you guys notice on the original I've got some streakiness in there okay I do that by mixing blue in here like this but not making it perfectly blended I leave it streaky it looks almost like a like a swirly light blue and dark and dark blue paint right now I'm not too worried about that what I want to talk about is what I'm doing which is covering my marker right when I do this because I did it dark I can still see my rocket ship <clears throat> through the paint, which is what I want. What I want you guys to do before you do this part here is to go ahead and darken up your outline with your pencil or take a pen or a marker and do this. I apologize for not having talked about this earlier because I just now realized that, you know, uh, that the darker paint was going to cover some of your pencil marks if you leave it only in pencil in, in light pencil if you or the other option would be that you start to do this and if you can 
see your pencil marks through this, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about darkening, darkening up those lines first. But I do recommend it. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up close. You can see how you can still see the rocket ship, right? So before you do this step, please take a moment to darken up all of your lines, okay? With pen, with a pencil, etc. But as long, so long as you can see your brush, your pencil lines, your marks, your drawing through the brush strokes, okay? If you try to do it the other way, which is another option, is to go around the rocket ship like this, right? Trying to paint around it. You can do that, but you're not going to get this effect of this unif these, these even lines going across the sky where it makes it look like it's flying through space, okay? So just to go over this again, if you want to make sure that you're able to see your rocket ship through the paint, you want to go ahead and go through and darken everything up in, mar in, the, in a pen or marker, etc. Okay, once you've done that, you make your mix and you go ahead and go through and apply the paint to your canvas using these diagonal brush strokes from one corner to the other like this. The streaks in the brush strokes make it look, in the paint, make it look like your ship is flying across the sky. The other option is if you can, if you can do this and still see the pencil marks that you already have on your canvas, or your paper or whatever it is you're painting on, then don't worry about it. Lastly, if you don't want to darken up your lines and you just want to go ahead and apply the paint to what you've already got, then go ahead and do this where you'd be working around the rocket ship like this, right? And then try to create the streaky lines through it. Any uh, try to make it you know work with that process. You won't be able to make as many streaky lines as the original has or as what I'm doing here if you do it that way, but it will still work. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. It, again, you can always pause the video, go back to go over what I said. That's the beauty about watching this on videos. You can go back and pause, rewind, etc. Okay, guys. So once I've got this, once you're at this place, right? Again, I've got my blue paint and I can see my rocket ship, I'm going to um, move on to the next step. Now, I've got another option. I can leave this and let this dry, <clears throat> excuse me, for about 10 minutes. It is quick drying uh, paint, so uh, it'll dry fairly quickly, and then you can come in and work uh, on the canvas dry, okay? But I'm not going to do that just yet, if at all. I may do that uh, another step later, but I'm not so sure that we're going to need that. Here's what I am going to do, though. For those of you that are going to be possibly hanging this up, um, if you're, you know, if you like it enough to hang it up on your wall, maybe what you want to do is paint the sides. So like this. Okay, I'm going to come across and paint all the way up, and then all the way across the top. If you're doing a canvas painting, right? If you're working on canvas. If you're not working on canvas and you're maybe using construction paper or you're using um, some other material that you're painting on, but it's flat, doesn't have these edges, don't worry about it. Also, also, maybe what you want to do is you want to do this bottom edge. If you're using an easel, don't do this yet. You would do this at the very, very end. If you do this now and you do this, it will stick to the easel and make it easy, hard to take off when you're done. If you're working on a flat surface with a canvas, then go ahead and do that, all right? So again, if you're, not, if you're working on an easel, don't worry about the bottom until the very end. Okay, cool. Now, folks, here's what we're going to do. The brush that I'm not using, I go ahead and put it back into my water cup, okay? Uh, that keeps my brush from drying out, all right? And um, I go ahead and grab my quarter-inch brush. This little brush, I'm going to go ahead and work in uh, the purple planet and the yellow and the green planet. So here's what I'm doing. So I've got this purple here on my palette. I'm going to grab a little bit of it. I want to make it lighter. So I'm going to do this. Okay. Find a little, little spot on my mix plate, right? I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix the two together to make a lighter purple. I'll make it as light as I'd like. Maybe you don't want to make it lighter. Maybe you want to make it darker. If you wanted to make it darker, you could add some black to the paint if you've got black. Or you could add even a little bit more blue and more red from your palette, and that will darken it up a bit. 
So, but I want it lighter, so I'm adding some white. All right, I'll make the color as light as I'd like, and then I'll come in here, and I'm going to do this. Now, one thing that I want to point out, this first step, this first layer of purple paint that I'm putting on my canvas is going to be transparent, okay? I'm not worried about that. I'm going to come back later and add another layer over this, all right? Same thing I'm going to do with, that I'm going to do with the green one. Now, I've got some paint on this. I want to use this for my green planet. Here I do this. I clean this up, swirl it around in my brush a little bit, take some of that purple out, clean it up. I'll do that a couple of times. So then I come over and I grab some green from my plate, from my palette, bring it over to my mix plate, take a little bit of white, mix the two together to make a light green. And guess what I'm going to do? I'll bring that over here and put that here. Now, same thing. It's going to be a little bit transparent. I'm going to be able to see some of that blue coming through. I am not too worried about that right now. Okay. All right. Very cool. Next, switching over to our inch brush, the second largest brush in the group. I clean it up a little bit because it's sitting in the water cup and some of that uh, water that's in there mixed in with the uh, blue from the original paint that I used on that background, right? It was on that big brush. I put the brush back into the cup, so it got a little dirty, no big deal. I'm going to take some white right here from this palette. I just take some white. You can see it's a little dirty from some of the blue and some of the uh, purple that I brought over from the other brush, right? It's going to get mixed up. It's going to happen. I'm just avoiding some of that. And I'm grabbing pure white. And I'm going to come over here and do this. All the white areas in the rocket ship, I'm going to go ahead and fill those in right now. So I don't know what paint you guys are using at home. Maybe you're using tempera. Maybe you're using acrylic like I am. Maybe you're using markers. Maybe you're using uh, colored pencil. I don't know. Maybe you're using crayons. So right now, all I'm doing is, doing, is adding a layer of this paint to my rocket ship. I'm using the big brush, the bigger brush to cover the area much more quickly, right? Once I've done this one time, I'll go like this. I'll switch back to that quarter inch brush that I was just using a moment ago for my planets. When I did the two planets, I clean off any excess paint that's on there. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. I can have a little bit of other colors of paint on here. I'm not too stressed about it. This is the first layer of white paint that I'm putting on the rocket ship. So just here we go, just like this. And if you notice, this is nowhere near as bright white as what's on the original. What happens in order to get that bright a white with acrylic paint or tempera paint, you're, you're going to have to layer. So this is our first layer of paint. All I'm doing is creating the base, right? The first layer. I'll do this. Again, I'm just trying to make sure that there's an even coverage all around my rocket ship. Careful around the edges, right? You don't want to get too much into the blue uh, around the around the rocket ship. Okay, so just like that, it's all streaky. It's transparent. I can see some. It's like light blue. I'm not worried about it. Once it dries, I'm going to come back and do another layer over that. All right. So here we go. What's next? Same brush. Swirl it around a little bit. I'm going to do the orange on my wings here and on my cone. I've got this really. Uh, bright fluorescent orange that I'm going to be using. If you don't have any orange and you have yellow and red, you can mix the two together and create orange, okay? I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. So here I go, I'm just gonna do this. And again, same thing folks, this is going to be a little bit transparent on this first layer. I'm not worried about that because I am going to be coming over later and adding another layer of this, all right? Just like that, just like that. Now, maybe for the, the section up here, actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to switch back. I'm going to keep the same brush, same brush. I'm going to do my cone, the very tip of my rocket, just like that. Okay. Again, guys, now I'm switching over to this little small one just to get into these little small areas like the point. This is going to take at least a couple of layers of paint to get it really bright. I'm not worried about it. You at home, if you're getting the same effect, that's very normal. Don't stress about it. You'll see it's going to come out very, very nice 
when we're all done. Part of art does require that we're patient. Some people don't have a lot of patience, but art will teach you to be patient if you let it. All right, so here we go, boys and girls. All right, just like that, just like that. There we go. Again, I'm using the really skinny brush for this at the moment. Now I'm going to do the little section in the center, a little wing here. There we go. All right, we're getting somewhere. So what's left on our rocket ship? The window ports and then this back part and then that. So the window port, this and this. I'm going to start with the dark blue areas first. So I take some blue right here from my plate. I'll grab some blue. Don't need to mix it with anything. I just come over and I do this. I could use a bigger brush. <clears throat> I'm not worried about that right now. I'm going to stick to the little skinny, tiny brush. The smaller brushes help you um, work with the really small sections, right? But you have more control as to where the paint goes when you use the smaller brushes, okay? The bigger brushes, it's a lot easier to um, accidentally get paint in areas that you don't want it to go. But it also takes, but it's a lot faster to work with. With the smaller brushes, you get more control and less likely to have accidents, but but um, it also takes longer, okay? So there's that, all right? I'm also gonna do the, use this blue for the outside here, the outside of, this, of the, our window. All the way around like this, okay, cool. Now I'm going to take that color, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take quite a bit of my white from my, from my paint plate, okay? Grab some white from here like that. I bring it over. I mix it because I want a pretty light blue. I know I've already got some here. I could have just used some of this, or maybe I could maybe I could have also lightened some of this. But I want you guys to see the process of how mixing colors works. Okay, so here we go. I made some light white or light blue. Sorry, I'll come in and do this. All right, I like that. I like that. Very cool. Okay, what's next? The fire. Okay, we're gonna work on the, fi on the fire here. I'm gonna start with the yellow section first. So what do we have? Yellow on our plate, right? So I grab some yellow, don't need to mix it with anything. I'm using my little brush and I'll come in and I'll do this. Again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this particular step is going to be transparent. Another, the paint, sorry, is going to be a little transparent. What that means is that you can see some of the color in the background, in this case, blue, right? The blue in our background coming through the paint, like these sections here, here where my brush is, right in there, okay? It looks almost green because the blue and the green and the yellow mixed together will make green. Oh, sorry, I don't think I mentioned that earlier. Maybe I did. Blue and, blue and yellow mixed will make green, okay? So here in this case, because I'm putting yellow over blue, it can look a little bit green. But this is only our first layer, so I'm not worried about that, okay? Again, we're not worried. We're just kind of having fun with this. You don't want to take this too, too um, seriously where, to the point where it stresses you out. Just relax, especially if you're new to painting. This is all a new process for you. The more you do it, the more you're going to learn, and this is a learning process. So now what I want to do is the orange section. I've done the yellow. I want to do the orange. I grab the same brush. I can do this. I grab some of my fluorescent orange here and I'll come over and do this. In a second, I'm going to show you guys how to make orange if you've only got yellow and red, okay? You're just going to mix those two colors together and you're going to make a shade of orange. So here we go. Again, same principle here, same rule. It's going to be transparent. But when we come back into another layer, it's going to look really, really bright orange, or much more bright orange. Now I'm going to take some red and do that part. So I take some red here, I come over, and here we go. Still using the little tiny brush, okay. There we go. Beautiful. I like it. 
Okay, I said I was gonna show you guys how to mix uh, red and yellow to make orange. So I've got some orange on my brush. I find a little spot on my plate here. I don't need a lot of red. Red is really strong. And if I use too much red, then the orange is gonna get uh, really, really red. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this red like this. Okay, a little bit of my red, bring it over. And I'm gonna take yellow and mix it in. Watch what happens. As I mix the two together, I create orange. The more yellow I use, the brighter it's going to get. The more red I use, the darker it would be. So, like, okay, here's our red, and now we have orange. Now watch if I add more yellow to it, it's going to get brighter and brighter. Okay, so now I've got a really bright orange, or much brighter orange, right? You guys all see that? So that's how we mix orange, all right? A little while, maybe I'll show you guys how to make green from blue and yellow. All right. So I want to go to my work on my stars. I want to work on these yellow stars that are there. I'm going to clean up my little brush a little bit. I still want to use that little brush because the stars are small. I want to use the small brush. So here we go. Grab my brush, put some yellow, you know, dip it into the yellow, and here I'll come. I'm going to do this. So here's a tip. Sometimes people will try to do this where their hands just floating in the air and the hands kind of shaky, especially when you don't have a lot of practice. And it's hard to stable to make straight lines because your hands kind of wiggly. You're gonna make wiggly lines because your hands shake. Here's what I like to do: I'll take my hand, especially if you're working with an easel. I'll put my hand that I'm not painting with onto the table, like this, or even onto the easel, like this. And then I'll take the hand that I'm painting with and I'll lay the wrist, this part right here, on my other wrist or on my forearm. Now, with that, my hand support, I can make straighter lines. I can it stabilizes my hand this way. Now I can make straight lines. Okay, that's one trick. All right, now, again, folks, this yellow is going to be transparent. I'm not worried about that. Moving on to my next star. Just like with everything else, I'm going to be layering. And I'll be adding another layer here in a little while. So again, hand on the table. There we go. There we go. Cool, look at that. All right, there's another star. And then I got one on top. Watch this little trick, folks. My little brush is skinny. When I dip it into the, into the paint, here's, here's what I can do. I'll put my brush with paint on it here on the side of my plate, and I'll spin it and pull. I'll spin it and I'll pull. What that does is it makes the point a little, little bit skinnier, and it makes it easier for me to get into these little areas of the like the little points in the star okay so again dip into the paint and I pull and, and swirl at the same time that makes the point really skinny now if you don't have a brush that's really skinny like this don't worry about it okay don't stress because your lines aren't coming out really skinny make your stars bigger if you make your stars bigger you don't have to worry about making such skinny lines right okay again Whatever supplies you have, you want to make do with that, all right? You want to make those work for you. So that's one way around it. If your brushes aren't skinny enough, then make bigger objects, all right? Okay, there's that. I do want to do some of these little white ones, the little white stars here, the little float ones are floating around out in space further away. These are bigger stars or stars that are closer to us, right? Okay, now little brush still we're working a lot we sure are working a lot with our little brush so i'm going to dip this in my white okay what was the idea there i want to make little tiny points so i dip it in the, in the paint and i spin it as i pull away spin and pull away now all these are our little points like this and like this and like that some a little bigger than others so i press the brush a little further in and you can make as many of these as you'd like remember this is your painting so make it your painting by making it however you want it to be. I got little stars, I got big stars, and I can make as many as I'd like or as few as I'd like. Little tiny, tiny ones, little tiny ones, and then bigger ones. Okay, just like that, little tiny ones, little tiny ones off in the distance. And then, there we go, there we go. All right, very cool. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 
boys and girls, I'm going to let this dry for about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to take a little bit of break, a little break. I need to eat something. I'll be back and we'll finish it up. I'm going to pause the video. I would suggest that if your painting is wet, that you do the same. Now watch, as I was working on the rocket ship, remember we did the background first. My rocket ship and my planets and my stars all have the first layer of paint on them. In the meantime, my background was drying. And look at this, I can touch the background and it's all nice and dry, okay? That's how quickly acrylic paint can dry, all right? Okay, break time, I'll be back, 10, 15 minutes. You won't notice it because I'm just pausing my video recording process, but I'll be back in a second. Okay, so <clears throat> I am back. I probably took about 20 minutes and my piece is all nice and dry. So that is what I want. <clears throat> you know, I want to uh, do a second layer over uh, what I have. And that's going to make my piece stand out quite a bit more. I'm going to start with the white, <clears throat> right? We're going to start with that white. And all I'm simply going to do is, uh, in this case, I'm going to use the second, sorry, not the second, but the quarter inch brush. <clears throat> a little quarter inch flat brush. Um, I clean it up a little bit. In the meantime, while I was letting everything dry, my brush just sat in my water cup, right? They're still wet. <clears throat> Again, I'm working with acrylic paint. If I let those sit, if I let acrylic, acrylic paint sit here and dry, my brushes will get ruined. Okay, so I take some white, take some of my white, and I come on over and I do this. And look at this. Look how much brighter that turns out. Right? Look how much brighter that gets, everyone. Very nice, right? Very cool. I can even use my brush to shape the edge of my ship a little bit if i want to give it a little more more of a curve kind of like on the original i can kind of do this right just a little bit all right so i come over and i do that okay very nicely <clears throat> in some cases i may even have to do a third layer of paint right depending on what it is that we're painting um, sometimes we have to do a second layer a third layer in this case we don't have to um, this is actually turning out very nice and bright. This is what we want. All right, look at that, look at that, right? Looking a lot like the original. Even if you still see some of the blue coming through, it's up to you. <clears throat> if you wanted to do a third layer, you would want to let this sit and dry one more time before you came back and did a third layer, all right? For now, this is looking very nice, and I'm liking it. All right, here we go, just like that. Come around this way. I'm gonna take my brush, put it back into the cup. I'm switching over to the little tiny brush because I wanna use that for, <clears throat> for the little edges. So I'm just taking, all I'm doing is dipping my brush into my plate, right, where, where the white is, grabbing some of the white. So I'll do this right around here. I mentioned earlier that the smaller the brush, the more control we have of where, we can, where we're painting. Like that. Okay. And, you know, earlier we drew the piece, right? We drew it out, out and everything else. Even now that we're painting it, even if, even, be, even though we're painting what we drew, right? Over the lines and stuff like that, using those lines as our guide, we can still make changes. We can make adjustments with the paint. Like, let's say, for example, if I wanted to make the rocket ship thicker, I could. I could do that. And I've, I'm sure you've noticed it a little tiny bit. Some of you have anyway. <clears throat> I've adjusted the edges of the rocket ship a little bit by going over past the lines that I originally created. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we go. <clears throat> and I may, if I want, in a while, come back once this layer is dry and maybe do a third layer. We'll see what it looks like when I've got the other stuff painted there. Because I'm still seeing a little bit of, a, of a transparent paint some areas but it still it looks good i like it either way i like it <clears throat> but i'll decide a little bit later whether we're going to do another layer of white now watch this as i make the adjustments in this case again I'm, I'm using the paint to make a little bit of an adjustment i notice <clears throat> that 
right here. <clears throat> my, excuse me, my orange doesn't match. Doesn't match where my white is. I will. I'll use the orange paint here in a little bit when I apply the second coat to fix that. Okay. So but anyway, I am going to work with the orange next. So clean up my little brush. Grab more of that <clears throat> that fluorescent orange that we were working with earlier, like this. Okay. This fluorescent orange is a little bit on the thick side. I want to tone it down a little bit. I want to make it a little less thick by mixing some water into it. So I grab my mix plate, I come over, find a little spot. I'm gonna grab a couple of drops of water, I'll bring them over. So all I'm doing is dipping my brush into the water, water cup and bringing over the water that sticks to the brush, it soaks into that brush and we'll do this. <clears throat> by doing this with really thick paint, it makes it easier to work with. All right, makes it easier to spread. Some paints, depending on the type of paint, depending on the kind of uh, materials that are used to create that paint, can get a little bit thick. And watch this, folks. I'm noticing that while this is brighter, right, this is getting brighter and nicer, it's still kind of transparent. So we are going to do one more pass on the wings here in a bit. <clears throat> Once they're dry, we'll come back and do a third pass if you want them to be a little bit brighter. I'll leave that up to you. Maybe I won't do a third pass, we'll see. Again, <clears throat> I mentioned that you kind, of, you kind of create your own painting, <clears throat> right? You create your own piece. Your own masterpiece is what you're doing. And if whatever you like, that's what you're gonna do, right? You're gonna create whatever it is that you like to create, whatever um, ideas you have, I want you to get creative with it. <clears throat> I want you to be happy with your painting. So watch what I do. Remember a tip from earlier where I <clears throat> put the brush into the paint, spin it, and pull it, pull it back as I spin it. It makes the point really thin. That allows me to come in and do this. Okay, little tiny corners, small little spaces. I'll come over here and do that too. that all right since I'm working with my orange <clears throat> I'm gonna add some to my fire to the fire in our little fire tail our little burst of a flame back here okay let's make this brighter this flame you know brighter and Shinier. Okay, it's a really bright fire that's coming out of this rocket ship. All right. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. And now I'm going, going to do the yellow. I'm going to add another layer of the yellow. I'll do this. I'll come over. Watch that. Look at that. That's getting a lot brighter, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that. All the way around. Take your time, everybody. Take your time with your piece. Again, if there's anything that you missed, you can always go back <clears throat> and go over the video again. And if this time around maybe you don't like your painting, do it again. Do another one. <clears throat> You'll always have this video to come back to. Guess what I'm going to do next? Since we're working with the yellow, <clears throat> what is next? We're going to do our stars. Okay, so I'm just grabbing some of the yellow from my plate, bringing it over to the mix plate, spin my brush. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of water. So I dip my brush into the paint. Sorry, I dip my brush into the cup, bring some of that water over. <clears throat> Makes the paint a little bit easier to work with. I spin my brush in the paint right as I pull it away. Doing that. And I'm going to come in 
and do this to my stars. <clears throat> and what did I say earlier about using my hand to stabilize? My, my paint, the hand that I'm not painting with goes on the table or even on the easel. And then I grab the hand that I'm painting with and I put my wrist over the other wrist or the forearm of my non-painting hand. This makes it easier for me to make these straight little lines. A little easier to stay within the lines of my stars. Okay. Again, then I'll come over and do another one over here. Look at that. <clears throat> my stars are getting brighter. Hopefully I'm not blocking too much of the video. I think you're able to see what it is that I'm doing here. Last star up at the top. There we go. Oops. Went down a little too fat. Notice what I did there. I took my thumb, simply wiped off that extra paint. Sometimes that'll work. All right, look at that. Again, everyone, do not stress yourselves out. Art, painting primarily is about having fun. If your piece isn't looking out, turning out exactly the way you want it to, don't worry about it. Practice makes perfect. You can always come back to this and do it again, like I said. These videos will be, will always be up. So let's say you do this today, maybe a month from now. You want to come back and do it again. Let's say you go through and do other videos on here. And you say, oh yeah, you move on, right? You maybe maybe you do you do <clears throat> Lola the Llama next. Or whatever else is you know our options on my channel. But a month from now, two months from now, you come back and do this again. Or maybe tomorrow you come back and do it again. Or when we're done here today, you'll do another one of these. <clears throat> All of that is up to you. Okay, cool. Now watch this. The second layer that I did here is already almost completely dry. All right? It's warmed up a little bit inside my room, inside my paint studio, and so <clears throat> we have that. Before I go and touch that up, I'm going to do another layer of my dark blue. So I'm switching. Actually, I'm going to keep my same little brush. I'm using the same little tiny liner brush for this. So cleaning up some of the yellow that was on here. I don't want it to mix with the blue and turn green. Remember, blue and yellow will make green. So I, I do want to add a little bit of water to my paint. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Dip my brush into the water cup. Bring some of that water over. I'll do that a couple of times. I want the paint nice and smooth. So I'll blend it really well, really, really well. Sometimes when you have lumpy paint, Sometimes if paint sits for too long, it can get a little, a little bit lumpy as it dries out. So you'll bring it over and you have little lumps in it. By adding water to it, you can eliminate a lot of that lumpiness and make it, again, really flowy. It's almost like you're working with, with ink. All right, I am liking that. Look at that. It's turning out quite nicely. Okay, and of course you can all still see on the original, we got glitter. For those of you that have some glitter at home, we'll be adding that <clears throat> in a little while. 
Okay, just adding more water to a little bit more blue paint. So I can come over and do that. Try to make it so you guys can see what I'm doing without me blocking the camera. It can get a little tricky. Okay, let me see. Just like that. All right. In a moment, I'll come in and make an adjustment on my cone. If you know, if you notice this part. <clears throat> oh, also, I want to make it a little curvier. Just a little bit like that. Just like that. If you guys are, um, I'm sure you guys are all experienced with coloring books, right? Everybody grew, grew up coloring books. Normally, you want to stay within the lines. And so when we drew the rocket ship at the beginning, those are the lines that we use. And we stay, we typically stay within those. But I want you guys to understand that this is your art and you're, you're able to modify. You're able to change things. And so as I'm painting, as I'm painting over what I drew, and the same thing applies to you guys at home, if there's something that you want to modify, something you want to change, you can do that with the paint. So now I want to touch this. Yep, this is dry. I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in with my orange. Okay, just like this. In this case, I'm not going to add any water. I'm just going to use this straight like this. And I'm going to add a third layer. As I add this layer, I'm also going to fix this so that the blue part lines up with the orange. There we go, like that. And now it's really starting to uh, stand out. All right, look at that. Look at that. My point is really skinny. All right. Time to do the wings again. Okay, third layer on the wings. I'll come over. Like this. Painting, drawing, art in general does take patience. Some art takes longer than other art to create. Some art is quite a bit faster. But there's always patience. There's always patience involved. And you want, to, you want to be patient because it is a process. If you work too quickly, the outcome may not turn out the way you want it to. Okay? But patience, definitely. You have to be a patient person to create art. You also have to be patient to understand that mistakes are going to be part of the process. You learn from those mistakes. You get better with time, just like you do with anything else. So now I'm going to do this part back here and watch this. Look how much brighter that looks now. And remember what I said about fixing this little area right here? Now I bring that orange over to match the white and the blue part of the rocket. Just like that. Just like that. And if you wanted to, you could make this even brighter still by adding another layer. We're not going to do that. I like the way that it looks right now, but but yeah, you could definitely do that. Some people that really want a bright, bright orange area will come back and do another layer there. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to add some of my orange into the fire, fire part. And again, look what happens. It just gets brighter and brighter. that look at that right there all right okay there we go one more layer of white I'm also going to actually let me before I do the white I'm gonna I'm gonna touch up my moon to look my planets remember what we did for the green planet we mixed some green and some white right we had that color there so I'm going to try to create the same color. It doesn't have to match exactly, but close enough. So there I am mixing some white and some green together. Now watch what's going to happen. 
Watch this. That or original layer of green is completely dry. And look how much that pops now. That really stands out. Again, everyone, make your own painting. If you wanted to do a different color planets, all up to you. Maybe you guys want orange planets or blue planets, right? Okay, so let's go over to the purple planet. I'm going to grab a little bit of purple, right? I'm going to bring it over here. Bring some white. That original purple that's there is all dried now, so I'm making some more. Again, I don't have to match it exactly the same as long as it's close. It's all I'm really looking for. Once I've got the color that I want, I'm coming in and doing that. Look at that. The difference between the first layer and the second layer really makes things stand out. Okay. I can even use a swirly action with my brush, like from the center, like this out. It creates a really cool little effect. All right. Okay. Let's do a last layer of white. So I take my little quarter inch brush. I clean it up a little bit. I'm going to add, I have another plate that I have on the side with a little, um, a little white that I put aside earlier. Uh, the white on this plate is kind of, you know, it's got some other mixes in there. So I want to um, avoid getting some of that, those other colors mixed in. So I'm, I've got another plate that I have ready. If I was doing some of my own, I'd simply grab my paint, my paint bottle, white paint, pour some on the old plate instead of having this already mixed. But for the purpose of having this work flow a little faster, I already have it ready. So I do want to take some of this white paint, which is thickened a little bit with the with the heat in the room. I want to bring some blue paint, some some sorry, some water over from my plate from my cup. My water cup. I have another water cup over here with clean water. I'm going to add a few drops into some white that I brought over towards the center of my plate like this. And I really want to blend that in. I want to make sure that it's nice and blended. I'm going to do that one more time. So a little more water, a couple of drops. One thing you don't want to do is you, want, you don't want to make your mix runny by adding water to it. You don't, you don't want it to run, right? You don't want it to... And one way to check is if you added too much water is you do this and the paint will start to run. That's a sign that you added too much water. What you would want to do in that case is grab more paint and mix it in and thicken it back up a bit. So you want it smooth and you want it easy to work with, but you don't want it running. All right, here we go. Watch this now. Look at that. Look how much brighter that ship is now. So this layering process is a, is a really common one that people use when they paint. It's not always necessary. It really depends on what kind of look you're going for, but it also depends on the kind of paint that you're using. Um, brand of paint. Some paints are, even though they're the same type of paint, they're made a little differently than other paints. And we'll, we'll talk about that perhaps some other time, you know, some other paintings. We'll, we'll talk about different paint paintings or different types of paint, etc. But usually with acrylic paint, you, you're going to have to do a little bit of layer. In other words, adding, doing one layer first and then letting it dry and coming back and doing, doing another layer later. Oh, so, okay, really quickly. One thing, so I, I, I'm liking this, but one thing I forgot, I didn't do another layer of blue around my window and I didn't do any orange here in the center wing. I'm sure some of you at home noticed that and were probably going, hey, Jesse, you forgot. Hey, Jesse, you forgot. But good thing that I caught that. So here we go, back to the original orange, fluorescent orange, grab some of that. And I'm just going to bring a little bit in here on this wing. So once again, what do we do when we want to make the point really skinny? We spin it and pull away. Spin and pull away. Okay. Can you allow me to get into here? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. All right.
that. Look at that. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to do another layer of red in my flyer. I don't think I did that earlier either. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. The order doesn't isn't as important. Not in these. Not for this painting anyway. All right. And we are going to add some red glitter to my fire here to make it stand out. All right. Look at that. And then what did I say? We're gonna work, we're gonna work on that porthole in the window. Looks like I got, looks like I got, looks like I got a little bit of orange accidentally up here by the by the port. It's all right. I'm gonna use the back of this brush to take that off. Oh, I'm gonna use my finger too. Look at that. We'll fix that up here in a moment. So taking some blue. Dipped it right into the blue paint. I'm gonna do this. All right, look at that. Okay. Take a little bit of white and mix it with some blue, right? A little bit of white, mix a little bit of blue with it. We're gonna make that light blue for the window itself, inside of the window. Now I'm gonna come in. Just that right there. All right, look at that. And then to get rid of my orange in there, I can come in and wipe it off with a, with a um, paper towel and that would do the trick. But in this case, it's so little, I can just take a little bit of white and cover that up. Mistakes do happen from time to time when we're painting and there are different ways to fix what's going on. Sometimes um, you can use whatever it is that you know, let's say you have an accident on here and you're like, well, what the heck, how, how, what did I do? I put a smudge of paint where it doesn't belong. You can fix it. You can maybe use it instead of fixing it. You say, hey, how can I use that in my painting? And you can incorporate it into the painting or you can erase it. There's different ways to approach it. Okay. Uh, blue up here. I noticed that I've got some orange in here as well. So I'm just going to do this. Clean this up a little bit more. All I'm doing now, the painting is just about done. I'm just going to go through and you all, you'll always want to do this. You'll want to take a moment, look at your painting and go, okay, do I need to fix anything? What's well, a little bit off? I'm over to the side a little bit. I'm not quite in front of it, right? The camera's in the way. So it's difficult for me to see the um, proportions and stuff. So, but normally I would stand right in front, step back a few feet, take a look at it and make any assessments and see if there's anything that, that anything that I need to change, refine, adjust. You know, that kind of a thing. So here we go. Move it to just that a bit. Another match. Now my flame is too far in on this side, right? See how the flame is on the very edge here? So I will come in with a little bit of yellow and fix that. Again, I mentioned earlier that painting is about making adjustments. Making little adjustments as you go. Same with drawing. If something doesn't look right the first time, that's okay. Figure it, look at it, take it, you know, see how you might be able to fix it, and then you fix it. See, watch this right here. I'm just touching this up so we'll... there we go. All right. All right. Look at that. And if I wanted to, I could come in and do another layer on my stars. I'm not going to do that. I like it. I will come in and do, add a little bit more orange to the cone at the tip of my rocket just right in here to even things out a bit this orange paint is really thick but that's all right we can make it work you know not too long from now i'm thinking i may end up having a subscription program and you'll I'll explain more on that later, but perhaps I'll have a little paint kits that for those of you that are interested, you can order from me and I'll send those out and you'll have all the stuff you need to follow along with any particular painting that you're interested in. Like, let's say for example, this, maybe I send you out the kit that has the canvas, maybe an easel, don't really necessarily need it, but the particular colors, glitter, maybe the brushes, that kind of thing for another day conversation for another day all right everyone 
<clears throat> one last thing you could do if you wanted to is come in here with a little tiny brush, a little skinny brush, um, clean it up, go with the white and add more stars or, or um, maybe refine the lines that you've already got in order to make them brighter. Okay, um, like this. So I dip my brush into the white paint. I spin it and pull away to make that point skinny and small, right? And then I'll come in and just kind of... I can make more, I can simply come in and touch up ones that I already have to make them, some of them, maybe not all of them, a little bit brighter, all right? So that is pretty much it for this painting. I always tell people, sign your piece. You want people to know who made it. So in this case, I'm using my little skinny brush. Let's see, what color should I sign this with? Let's go with, yeah, we'll make a, Mix a little bit of white and a little bit of red. We're going to make like a light pink. Why not? Why not? Okay, and then I'm going to come in. You can pretty much sign the piece wherever you would like. <clears throat> oh, one more thing I almost forgot. We'll talk about in a second. This bottom section. After I sign it, I can come in and paint this in blue. And I'll flip it on its head so that it dries. But here we go. Here's a, here, I'm about to sign this right here. I'm just going to come over and sign this over on, on this section. Yeah, I'll get the, the, the little dot for my J. There we go. Bam! Okay, now everyone knows what I did. Everyone knows that I did it. I could come in now and mix a little bit of that blue from original, you know, from the original background color. I like this. Take a little bit of white, take a little blue, mix the two up together, and then come in and do this all the way over if you're working with the, with the canvas right if you're doing this on canvas if not doing this on canvas don't worry about this stuff obviously not it does not apply to you again if i do this it'll stick when it dries it'll stick to my easel i'll flip it over for now and then it's going to dry okay one moment everyone don't leave me Okay, everybody, I'm back. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit to get a better close-up of the pictures. Okay, so I looked at my painting, right, and I can see there are some differences between this one and the original as far as size and things like that, but I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, in the same way, everyone's is going to look a little bit different, right? Um, I could sit here and tr fix it to not fix it, but change it to make it look more like that. But I, I don't need to. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the way it looks. It's my rocket ship, right? So I can make it look like what I read like. What I'm going to do next, I mentioned earlier, there's all kinds of glitter on this piece on the original. There's a little bit of glitter, nothing you know, like fire and stuff like that. So what I have here are some glitter paints that I'm going to be using. So I have these little glitter bottles that I can get. At different art stores, they carry these guys, all kinds of different colors. I poured them out onto a little plate that I've got here. Just like what we do with the um, with the paint, we're gonna brush this on. Um, it's, it works much like paint does. I went ahead and cleaned up my brushes pretty well. I don't wanna have any wet paint on them because it, it will mix in with the glitter and then the glitter's gonna get all nice and cloudy and we don't wanna do that. We don't want, the, we don't want cloudy glitter. We want nice and shiny, pretty glitter, all right? so. Um, I'm going to add gold to my yellow parts. I'm going to add blue to the blue parts and I'm going to add red to things like the fire. So I'm going to start with the gold parts because I've got some gold here and my stars. So, sorry, yellow in my stars and yellow in the fire. So I'm starting with that. Taking my little skinny brush because I'm working with really small, really small parts of the painting and I'm going to do this. All I come over and I do this. It, and it might be a little hard for you to see what I'm doing with the glitter on camera, but I'll hold up the painting here in a little bit and you'll see what it looks like in the light when you add glitter to it. You can use this glitter to really make things stand out. You don't have to put everywhere on the painting. You can if you want. Um, for example, maybe if I wanted to do blue all in the in space, right, the outer space part, I could do that. Um, I could do glitter on my planets. I could do glitter all over the rocket, um, stuff like that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add it in some little areas like my stars. I want the stars to stand out. So I'm adding glitter there. 
And just like what we do with everything else, we can layer this. We can layer uh, glitter. Uh, once it dries, you can come back and do another layer. And then everything's your, then again, it does stand out even more. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to come in and do this one time. But if you can't quite see it at home, how nice and glittery this is becoming, you will in a bit when I lift up the painting and hold it at an angle. So for those of you that have glitter at home, this is what you want to do. You want to come in here and add this nice little step because it does make a really big difference. If you don't have glitter, no big deal. Maybe you'll pick some up next time for the next painting. Like I said, you can pick this stuff up at any craft store, any art store. It usually carries this stuff. Um, so, all right. Cool. All right. Now I'm going to use the red for my fire. Okay, I'm going to do this. Grab some of the red, and I'm going to put it right in the fire. Right there. Right there. Look at that. That's really good. Okay. And then last, I want to do my blue. There are these little sections right there. I'll grab a gob of my blue glitter, right? Just like this. I'll come over and I'll do this. Just like that. All right. Oh, I'm going to add some to my window. I didn't do that on this one here. That's all right. Just like that all the way around. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, up here. Okay. Let me hold this up. Hopefully you guys can see it. Again, you can layer this and it's gonna really, really start to stand out. Okay, I did a couple layers on some of the parts on the original. But hopefully it's it's not too bright where you can't see what's happening, but it is really nice and sparkly. All right. So anyhow, for those of you at home that have the glitter, that's what you wanna do, okay? And uh, yeah, you can have yourself a nice little painting here. All right, hold on one second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, once again, my name is Jesse, and I appreciate all of you guys being here, and I hope you had some fun. I hope you had a nice little experience. Remember that art is about having fun. Obviously, we're creating something, right? Something that wasn't there before, and there is there are steps involved. Patience is involved, but the more you practice, the better you will get. Remember that I do requests. Please send me any requests that you may have uh, as far as what you'd like to see in the future, and maybe you'll see that on here. I would love to see what you guys produce today, so if you can take some pictures and then email them, email them to me, I'm going to have my email listed below, uh, so you can send those out to me, and maybe in the future I will do a video where I put up some of the pictures that I get from some of you. Also. Let me know where you guys are watching me from. Uh, I'm in California, sunny Southern California, at least today it's sunny. Um, but um, I'd love to hear where you guys are from. Uh, city and state maybe, all right? Or country if you're watching, watching me from somewhere else. All right, guys, thank you. I appreciate your time and I hope to see you guys very soon. Uh, the next video for the next tutorial will be uploaded very shortly. So if it's not already up, so take a look for that, okay? All right, guys, thank you guys again. Bye now. Talk to you soon.